Welcome. Thank you for joining us in worship. We are glad you have taken the time to pray with us. The season of Lent has begun. It is a season of contemplation and renewing our relationship with God through prayer, music and silence in order to prepare ourselves for the joy of the Easter Resurrection. Wherever we are, God is with us, here and now. Let us pray. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And, and also with you. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord. Let us then turn and ask God's mercy as we confess our sins. forgives you. Forgive others, forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away our sin. Let us approach our God in peace. Amen. Gracious God, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God renews his promises in every generation. As we hear the words of Scripture, we can be confident that these promises remain true for us today. A reading from the book of prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with the ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my law within them and I'll write it on their hearts and I'll be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I'll forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it, and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Why did Jesus die? Now, many of us have been trained that the right answer to that question is Jesus died for our sins. Good answer, except what if that is not the answer that Jesus himself gave? In today's Gospel reading, Jesus gives three reasons for his death, and none of them have anything to do with us being naughty or sinful. Here are 
the top three reasons Jesus is willing to die according to Jesus Christ. Number one, to bear fruit. Number two, to glorify God. And number three, to draw all people to himself. Maybe Jesus doesn't bother mentioning our sins because we already spend so much time thinking about them and talking about them and obsessing over them, which means we've got it backwards. The universe does not revolve around our sins. It revolves around the power of God's love. And the cross is about so much more than just me, my life, my sins, and my salvation. That is way too selfish. But today, Jesus is saying that his death will draw all people to himself. Which means that this is the total opposite of selfish. This is selfless. And he says that we can think of it this way. A grain of wheat cannot grow more food unless it dies. That is what it was meant to do. That is how God designed it. The grain needs to be buried under the earth. It needs to sit in the darkness until the right moment comes for it to swell and crack its shell and for new life to grow. And if we dig around in the soil, we will not find the original seed. It's gone. It gave up its life so that there would be more wheat in the world. And so Jesus is saying is that is why he died. For more wheat, more fruit, more food, more of everything that will sustain us and keep us alive. But what about, instead of dying, what if Jesus chose to save his own life? He could have written some books, done some interviews, gone on an international speaking tour. You know, the kind of seeds that our world tends to value. But in that case, how much fruit would his message have had? It might have lasted for a few centuries, like some of the great figures in history, but not much more. But instead, Jesus is willing to die. And because of that, God raised him from the dead. And because of that, people saw that death does not get the final word. And because of that, a new community came together that based its life around his death. And because of that, this community grew. In other words, Jesus' death made possible a new way of life. And let's be honest. The world has never been changed by us focusing on our sins. The world was changed because Jesus was willing to be God's seed. He was willing to die so that the fruits of new life could grow. 
So what about us? Because each of us has a grain of wheat. When the time comes, what will we do with it? Will we hold it tight, preserve it? Will we take pictures of it and post it on Instagram? Or will we follow Jesus' example and let our own seeds fall to the ground, be buried, and let God show us how death can actually be the path to new life. Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Trusting in God's promises, we let God's mercy wash away our past mistakes and regrets, enabling us to move forward in faith and love. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy God, oh Lord, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy God, oh Lord, have mercy on us. The answer to the phrase, let your name be glorified, is let your will be done. Let your name be glorified. Let your will be done. Let us pray to the God who loves us and understands our needs. Let your name be glorified. Let your will be done. God of mercy, we pray for all church leaders, teachers and pastors, and all who are being called into particular ministries, both lay and ordained. We pray especially for any who are wrestling with the demands of such a call that they may be given courage to offer themselves in your service. We pray for the Russian Orthodox Church, for Malcolm Rogers as the Archbishop of Canterbury's Apocrisiaros to the Patriarch of Moscow and all Russias. We pray for persecuted Christians worldwide and for the role of open doors in providing information about this. Let your name be glorified. Let your will be done. O seeing God, watch over the nations of the world in all their plans and actions, conflicts and disasters. Guard the children, guide the leaders, and give us all your peace. As a member of the World Council of Churches, we pray for people of all nations and generations, but especially Today, we pray for the nations, the people of the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. 
Let your name be glorified. Let your will be done. God of love, be present in every heart and home to cherish, to challenge, to reassure and to comfort us. We pray for the work of the mission to seafarers, for seafarers from and at Esperance in Western Australia and for the work in the port of Kent. Let your name be glorified. Let your will be done. God of wholeness, we bring to your love those who are weighed down with suffering or imprisoned by their fears, ease their burdens and give them the strength to bear what cannot be avoided. We pray for the leprosy mission and at this time especially their work in England and Wales. We pray for all those struggling in this troubled time and in our parish especially Pierre Alain, Elizabeth, Christopher, Alain, Christine, Thomas, Isabel, Kingsley, Hans, Brian, Pete, Jan, Jacqueline, André, John, Dominique, Heert, Ingrid, Danny, Lisbeth, Anne, Derek, Helen Jane, Paul, Francois and Chantal, and Matteo. Let your name be glorified. Let your will be done. God of life, we bring to you those whose earthly lives have ended, that in your mercy they may have everlasting peace. We thank you, Lord, for the life of Julius Utano, Jesselyn's cousin who died in Indonesia. Lord Jesus, our Saviour, our friend, you willingly gave yourself up to death to vanquish death and to save us from the grave and give us life. Listen to our prayer. Look with love and mercy upon all your people who mourn and pray for their dead brother. Let your name be glorified. Let your will be done. Gracious God, you are always so much more ready to give to us than we are eager to receive. Open our hearts and minds to live the costly way of love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, 
our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace, peace of, of the, the Lord, Lord be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. In whatever language we feel most comfortable, let us now pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Oče náš, sušči na nebesách, dá světice i mě tvojo, dá přijot cárci tvojo, dá budit folia tvoja i na zemlí, kak na nebě. Chleb nás nasučný, daj nám na svět děň. I prosti nam dalgi naš, kakaj mi prošaje, dožnikam naš. I ne vjedi nas v izkušenje, no izbav nas od lukavova. I ba tvojo, je carstvo, i sijo, i slava v objeki. Amen. Today, God's seed has been planted in us. For a time, it might remain hidden beneath the earth, but soon it will burst forth with new life. As we go back into our daily lives with God's blessing, 
we are filled with this hope that is waiting for us. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.